Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am sharing a palm free soap recipe with you and this is recipe number three from my test batch video that I did gosh a while ago almost a year ago I think but anyway we're doing recipe number three it's palm free it's got hemp seed oil it's got shea butter it's a wonderful recipe and the volume that I'm doing today will fit a beautiful standard size mold um, but I'm not using a mold today. So it's enough to make a nice loaf of soap today. But what I'm doing is making embeds. I have all my embed molds out. I'm thinking of fall time coming and I need to get some little peach molds poured and I just, I need embeds. So that's what I'm using the batter for today. But you don't have to do embeds. You can just make a beautiful loaf of soap with this recipe. It's fabulous. So the fragrance I'm gonna use today uh, because it's wonderful is blueberry from Be Scented. A couple of things I love about this scent is it soaps like a dream. It does not speed trace at all. It doesn't discolor. It's just wonderful. So I'm going to be using this fragrance because it it's just a plain blueberry. It's a beautiful scent, but it plays well with other fragrances. And because I'm making embeds, it needs to go along with other fragrances that I'm doing. So that's the fragrance I'm using today. And for the colors, I'm thinking of fall colors and peach colors um, for a future video that you will be seeing. I am making um, peach embeds for a soap that we'll do in the future. So I'm gonna be using, so these are the colors I'm using for all my embeds today is Tangerine Mica from Be Scented and that is gorgeous. Um, and then I bumped that up a little with some Red Vibrance from Nurture Soap. Oh, do yourself a favor and try this red. It's gorgeous. I'll just put a touch of this red in here to make it a pumpkin-y color for some pumpkin embeds I'm doing. Um, so I'm also using Red Vibrance. And then also I'm gonna be using my Sunburst Sparkle Mica from Rustic Essentials. They had a fabulous sale going on and I just grabbed a bunch of things from them and I'm trying their micas and this is beautiful. So these colors, and the fragrance is what I'm using today for my embeds. You can choose whatever fragrance you like. <laughs> um, I think that's it. I'm gonna get everything pulled together and I will talk you through the full recipe. I will show you how I make my lye solution, how I melt my silk fibers in there and uh, all the good stuff that goes into making soap. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let's go make some soap. All right, it's time to measure the water. I've got my stainless steel pitcher here. My scale is teared out with the, with the pitcher on and now I need 12 ounces of water to make this little embed batch that we're doing today. So here's how I do it pretty much every time. So you measure out however much you need, which today I'm doing 12 ounces. So I've got that and now it's time to add my cane sugar in here. Like I normally do, I put sugar in my soaps. It is a lather builder and booster. It makes a wonderful abundant lather sugar in your soap. So this is a two tablespoon scoop for my big batches. I use the whole thing. This is a smaller batch, so I'm gonna use probably about half of it. And I just put it in here. This is cold water, so it takes a little while to dissolve. So this is distilled water that I keep in my refrigerator down here in my soap room, and so it's cold. So I've got the cold water, the sugar. I'm just gonna let the sugar sort of dissolve in there and stir it off and on while I go get my lye out. Gotta get my gloves on and measure my lye. So I just let that sort of sit and dissolve. All right, it's time to measure the lye and we need 6.7 ounces of sodium hydroxide, AKA lye. So just measure that out carefully. I buy my lye in huge bulk uh, containers and I separate it out into these smaller containers. Oops, I went a little bit over. So I keep my stainless steel spoon here and you can just scoop off. There we go. 6.7 of lye. And now I just am waiting for this uh, sugar to dissolve. And now I'm gonna add my Tessa silk fibers. I buy this in a big skein of silk fibers. This is an additive that you do not need to put in your soap. I love it and I'm in the habit of adding it, so I do. This is definitely negotiable. Um, if you're making a vegan soap, you can't add this because it comes from silkworms. Uh, you could try corn silk. I've heard people loving corn silk. 
So this is Tussa silk. Um, I also like mulberry silk. It's wonderful. So I just tear off a tiny little bit um, because I'm doing a small batch today and I separate it out. You, if you have trouble with it melting in your lye solution, you can snip it up into tiny bits and it will melt a little faster. But I can't tell you how much that is because this weighs literally nothing. It wouldn't even move the scale. So just a teeny little wisp of silk and I just pop it in there and hold it down with my spatula. And now I'm gonna just add in my lye and it's gonna heat up really nice and melt those silk fibers down and all that good stuff. And it's gonna get heated up. You wanna stand back. The fumes are gonna come off of here. You don't wanna breathe those. It's just, that's unpleasant. And I stir this until I don't feel any grit uh, left in the bottom, either from the sugar or the lye. I want it to feel nice and smooth. And then once you're sure that everything is dissolved, you can just let it sit off to the side and cool, or go put it in an ice bath and cool it down. Um, or sometimes I'll make this ahead of time, several pots and let them sit overnight, and then they're nice and cool the next day. So some people, if you're not adding silk, uh, you can actually make this solution with ice cubes. And that would be really great. The only problem with ice cubes is it's hard to melt silk in there. <laughs> you kind of need the heat. And you can see the silk is completely dissolved. The sugar is dissolved. It's just, everything is just liquid now in there and it's great. So I'm gonna let that cool and let's go pull our oils out for the right, soap. It's time to measure our oils. And <laughs> I just wanted to show you my new utensil here. This is an ice cream scoop or not a scoop, an ice cream paddle, I think it's called. It's very heavy duty, it's stainless steel. And uh, I used to use a large dull knife, but I got several people commenting, oh, be careful with that knife and I don't wanna scare anybody. So I'm using my very blunt ice cream paddle to measure my oils. I just, I need something hard because I get the big buckets of oil and I have to sort of chip in there. So this is my new tool. Uh, okay, so we need 13 ounces of coconut oil for this batch. All right, and now tear that out. We need 4.8 ounces of shea butter. Okay, so in this recipe, those are the only hard oils and butter that we're using. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I melt this down. I do this when I make my normal large batches too. I measure all my hard oils, which would, this is a palm-free recipe, but normally I use coconut and palm and different butters. Uh, so I'm gonna go get this melted and then we will measure in the liquid oils to help cool down those. <laughs> so that's how I cool down my melted hard oils. So let me go get these melted and we'll be right back. All right, so I just pulsed it in the microwave till it's almost all the way melted and then I'll stir it till those last little bits melt because you definitely don't want to overheat at this point. Um, so after I pour my liquid oils in here, which of course are at room temperature, this will all cool down. And by the time my lye solution has cooled off, which I have sitting off to the side in the ice bath, everything will be ready to go and about the same temperature. That's what we're shooting for. I am not a stickler for having exact temperatures. Um, I like to soak between 80 and 90 degrees is my preference. I'll soak cooler than that. I don't like to soak much hotter than 90. There we go, it's all melted. Now it's time for the liquid oils. But anyway, I don't like to soak much hotter than 90, just personal preference. Um, but if my lye and oils are within 10 to 20 degrees of each other, I'm usually okay moving forward. So let's measure the liquid oils now. So what we need first is 3.8 ounces of hemp seed oil. I love hemp seed oil in a soap. It's so emollient and wonderful on your skin. Just love it. So 3.8. Okay, and next I need 2.4 ounces of castor oil. So I have my jar here of castor oil. I'm down to the last little bit. I have it upside down. So I'm gonna <laughs> open this upside down to measure my 2.4 ounces. Don't like to waste anything. So gotta get that last little bit out. 
Oh, I might just have enough, barely. All right, now I need 24 ounces of olive oil. And I got this olive oil from Sam's Club. It's one of the best prices that I've found on olive oil. And I've soaked with it a lot. It soaps wonderfully, so I'm very happy with this oil from them. Okay, there are all of our oils and butters. And uh, I'm gonna stir this around a little bit and go check on my lye and we'll take some temperatures. All right, we're getting ready to add our soap additives in, but first let's take the temperature of the oils. Just show you where we're at. 85 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm very happy with that. Now, this is a funny one. <laughs> Let me tell you about the fragrance because I'm gonna go ahead and add the fragrance in here because I've soaked with it before and it soaps like a dream. This is a blueberry from Be Scented. Um, and you wanna look up the IFRA usage rate for your whatever fragrance oil you're using. This is a category nine product, which means it is a touches the body, but is primarily a rinse off product. It's a category nine. Um, and so I looked up the usage rate, 70%. Okay, that's ridiculous. I'm not gonna add 70% of my oils in fragrance oil. So when in doubt, and some fragrance oils will have like 100% or something, um, I do 5%. That is a very safe level. Only a few fragrances are less than that. 5% is quote unquote the norm for a fragrance load for soap. So 5% of this batch size is about two ounces. So that's what I've got here is two ounces of blueberry. Um, figuring out the categories of product you're making, the usage rate, things like that. If you're a soap maker and you're gonna start selling your soap, I really encourage you to get familiar with all of that so that you can do calculations and figure things out on your own and not be dependent on someone else telling you. Because what if they tell you incorrectly? I've done that before. I've made mistakes and said the wrong number. And, you know, I'm human. I'm going to make mistakes. So it's really good for you to know the IFRA values, what categories they are, percentages. Uh, if you don't know percentages, just add up the total volume of your oils and your liquid, get a total number, go on Google and say, what is 5% of this number? And it will give you the number. Super easy to do. Um, it's not as complicated as it sounds. But all that being said, I've got two ounces of blueberry fragrance that I'm putting right on in here to my oils. I do this with fragrances that I know are gonna behave. If it's a new fragrance, and, and sometimes I do it when I'm lazy. So this is one of those do as I say, not as I do. If you're not familiar with the fragrance, don't put it in the oils. <laughs> this is only if you know what you're gonna get out of it. Otherwise, you know, I've had a couple of batches kind of go sideways on me, and that's my bad, right? <laughs> so got the fragrance. I'm going to put my colloidal oats and my kale and clay right on in here. This is another two tablespoon scoop. I'm not doing it full because this is a small batch today. Normally I do nice big heaping scoops for my big batches, but not today. So we got the clay, we got the oats. I'm going to get this blended on in here and then we can get to uh, getting our lime mixture over and making soap. We're back. Here's our lye mixture that we made, and I'm so sorry. I forgot to film adding. I like to film it after it's um, cooled off a little. I added some sodium lactate. I got this from Brambleberry. It, you add this at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. So I do that. This hardens it up and helps them unmold easier, and especially since I'm using little plastic uh, embed molds with details, I want that to um, help me <laughs> unmold easier. So sodium lactate is in here also. So what we're gonna do is get up to a nice light emulsion, very light trace, and then we'll split off for our colors. And I've got all of my embeds off to the side, but the most important one is my little heart molds here. These are a little over four ounces each, so I definitely need to pull off 12 ounces of this batch and color it for my little faux peaches, which are gonna be, you know, these heart molds are gonna be my peaches in a future soap. So that's gonna be my priority. Then I'm gonna take the rest of the soap and color it up for our other embeds that I have off to the side on trays. I've got my little leaf 
molds here. I've got my flowers. I've got my little pumpkins. So we will see how far this batch takes us. And I have flower molds off to the side too, but these hearts are the priority. So let's add our lye mixture, which is fully cooled because I submerged this in an ice bath and brought it down to temperature quickly because I um, didn't think to make it ahead of time and I wanted to bring you along. So anyway, ice bath is my friend sometimes. And when I do an ice bath, I take that water that's in the bowl that I do ice bath and I go water my plants with it afterwards so it doesn't go to waste. So we've got the lye mixture in there and I'm just going for a light trace again because, you know, I've got to play around with this for a little bit. So I'm stirring and pulsing. You know, I don't do a consistent If you, you can over blend at this point is what I'm trying to say. So we've got a good emulsion. It's not separating. So I'm going to set this out and go measure off 12 ounces for our colors. Okay. So for our peaches, I'm going to do yellow is going to be the main color with hints of orange. And that is going to represent my little peaches in these column molds. So, When you stick blend different colors, you start with the lightest color first and move on to the darkest, or you can rinse this off in between. But I like to go lightest to darkest, it just makes it go easier. I'm going to do an in the pot swirl for these little column molds. And I have them in this little cup to just kind of help hold them upright. These are poured. I'm going to set these off to the side. And bring back our pitcher and get some more colors poured for our next molds. And let me do the orange next for our little pumpkins. actually going to add a touch of this red in here to make it a little bit darker so that it's a more pumpkin-y color. Let's see what that gets us. Oh yeah, that's much better. Love that color. Perfect. We'll pull over our pumpkins and get these poured. Let's see how far this takes us. Oops.
it's the next day and I've got all my beautiful embeds poured here. Our little pumpkins, I can't wait to get these out. Flowers, leaves, these were kind of pesky. I had to pour so slowly because these are teeny, teeny, tiny. Look how thin that is. And so you, I definitely needed a thin batter to get these and that blueberry scent really played well. So anyway, oh, there we go. They're popping out already. Let's just pull one out. Isn't that pretty? For a little fall leaves so these are just going to sit over on my curing rack waiting for me to start my fall lineup of soaps but i think these are adorable let's get let's try another here we go little oak leaf oh my goodness these are adorable and they are unmolding very nicely that's the sodium lactate really helps with that oh love them okay Let's get on to the bigger ones here and see what we've got. All right, soap flowers. Aren't these colors beautiful? I'm not gonna unmold my little heart columns here for my peaches. I'm gonna leave these in here until I'm ready to make the soap and that will keep um, the soap sort of like a soap dough because I want them to adhere in the soap. So I will not be unmolding those today for you. You'll see the unmolding on the peach video when I get to it. But let's get these out. Ooh, gorgeous colors. Look at that. I love these soap flowers. They are just fantastic. So like I say, I always keep these molds, a couple of these off to the side when I'm making soap in case I have extra batter. I'll get some little flowers out of it and I love that. Let's do this one. Ooh, pretty. All these fall colors. I'm in the middle of hot summer right now and these fall colors are really making my day. <laughs> All right, let's get out a little pumpkin here and see how we're doing on the pumpkins. Now these are kind of deep embeds, so I didn't fill them all the way because I, you know, I don't need that big of a pumpkin. I just need a little pumpkin. Let me see how I get these out without bonking them. Oh my goodness, how cute is that? Look at that. So I'm probably gonna come in with some mica or when I put these down on the soap, I might cover the little stem with some green and leaves, but those are adorable. Oh my goodness. All right, so I got all my embeds poured. I'm gonna unmold all these, and uh, other than the soap flowers, we'll go on the curing rack and be as is, but the rest of these are just gonna get unmolded and wait for not a rainy day, but a fall soap day. All right, well, I'm gonna get the rest of these out and I hope you really enjoyed today's video. I hope you give the recipe a try. This would make a fabulous loaf mold. I've, I've soaked with this recipe a couple of times now and it's just wonderful for just an all over body bar. So if you give it a try, let me know how you like it and how you played with it. Let me see what you did with your soap batter. So thank you so much for joining me today and spending your time with me. I really appreciate you being here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications if you don't want to miss anything going on in the soap studio. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.